Hey guys, how are you doing today? It's P.E. Gilbert, your blogger, writing consultant, and the author to the fantasy novella, The Sultan's Daughter. And today, we are honoured to have an interview with the voice actor and award-winning commercial producer, John Wallace. John has done narration work for animation and for commercials, where he has put on over 40 different types of voices over the years, including for some top brands, such as Geico and Old Navy, as well as for the New York Mets. John is infectiously enthusiastic, funny, and extremely talented. Here is the interview. Enjoy. So, tell us a bit about yourself. Where do you come from? And how did this place influence your decision to become a voice actor and a commercial producer? Well, I was born in Monroe, Louisiana, a small town northeast Louisiana, here in the States. And uh, I was a big cartoon nut as a kid, like most of us are, you know, Saturday morning cartoons. And, uh, you know, by the time I was seven, I basically became a human parrot. Everything I heard, I could pretty much imitate and, and do pretty well. So needless to say, I was a strange child growing up. Uh, but, you know, it, I, I got into the voice acting thing. It was just such a cool thing to use my voice. And and for a long time, you know, I worked other jobs and, and oh, you're so talented. Why don't you do this? And and so I ended up uh, getting a job as an unpaid intern for six months. And I shadowed a production director who produced all the radio commercials and the imaging for all the radio stations. And I just fell in love with it. And I, I do all these different voices. So I was like, wow, I could. You know, I have a chance to do all these things I've been doing for years and actually make a living doing it. Uh, but it took quite a long time to where I could uh, just do that and pay the bills, though. Wow. You you did the you have had the right training and you've done it the hard way. Well done to you. It was tough. It was tough. Like I said, I started in market 244, uh, you know, and now I'm in New York, uh, Washington, D.C., all the biggest cities on the East Coast now. And it's it's an amazing feeling. It really is. Well, well done to you, and may you have that feeling forever. <laughs> we can always hope. <laughs> <laughs> what was the spark that made you decide to become a voice actor? It was just my ability to be able to imitate accents and other people. And I, I've always been into movies, uh, you know, always been a big movie buff. So, you know, I figured that was kind of the first step, uh, you know, because because voice acting is still basically acting. Uh, you know, you just don't have a camera in front of you, which is why I'm in radio. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the ugly people with great voices. We all end up in radio. Uh <laughs> Never heard that one before. And I'm sure it's not entirely true. I'm sure there are elements of truth to it. Um, <laughs> again, it sounds like, you know, you had the spark and the talent to do what you enjoy most. Good on you. It took, like I said, it took a long time. I, I grew up working construction, uh, you know, breaking my back for a living. So, so to be able to do this in an air conditioned environment, uh, <laughs> it feels great. <laughs> On top of being a voice actor, you are also an award winning commercial producer. Well done. Yeah, that's a Thank really you. good achievement. Thank you. My pleasure. You did all the hard work, not me. <laughs> what kinds of commercials do you make? And for which advert did you win your award? Uh, I make, I tend to lean towards more the comedy side. Uh, you know, everybody's heard the boring commercials with just music and a voice. Uh, you know, I like to tell a story. Uh, you know, that's the biggest thing is, is telling stories and not just pushing a, a product, you know, in a client's face. I mean, you know, that's, that's the key to it. But uh, so the, the biggest award I've ever won was the Radio Mercury Award. Uh, in New York City in 2018. It was for best radio station produced commercial in the United States. Uh, it's, uh, it was one of the ones I sent you. It's Allied Termite and Pest Space Raccoons. Uh, <laughs> and it's really goofy. Uh, the man gets attacked in the commercial. It's, it, it's stupid, but it's funny. And, and it really sticks with you because uh, when the commercial came out, it was, it was about time with the Guardians of the Galaxy it was really huge and exploding. So when I say Space Raccoon, everybody knew exactly who I was talking about. Uh, but uh, but that was the biggest award I've ever won. But uh, I've won other awards with Geico, a uh, big campaign I did for them a couple of years ago, Unique Ways to Save Money, which is all stupid, goofy uh, things. But uh, like I said, I always lean towards the goofy, but I learn more every day. 
You know, I really do. I'm, I'm, I've constantly produced on an average day. I do about 30, 30 commercials. Uh, last year, I think the number was at 3,200 spots I did last year. Uh, it was, it's quite a bit. It's quite a bit. And, uh, you know, but when you produce for so many markets, you're, you're just constantly going. Wow. You are incredibly hardworking and goofy or not, you're doing a really <laughs> good job. Hey, thank you. Thank you. I, uh, like I said, it's, it's taken a long time, uh, to learn the, to hone my craft. You know, I didn't go to college for four years, uh, you know, for this. Uh, so it was just something natural that I've just kind of grown and grown and grown. And I just, I love making people laugh. I love, you know, and nowadays people's attention span is like five seconds. If you can't get them in the first five or 10 seconds, you've lost them. And so that's my biggest, that's my biggest thing is, is to get people's attention. What kinds of commercials haven't you made yet that you would like to? Well, okay. When you talk commercials and you say the best of the best, you think Super Bowl commercials, right? I mean, those, those are the biggest, best commercials, the most expensive time slots in the world. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, to be able to write and produce a Super Bowl commercial would be, that would be it. That would be the, the epic, the epic thing I, I could die happy if if i produce a super bowl commercial uh, i did one for geico uh, the campaign i was talking about uh, unique ways to save money and, and and all of these could basically be put to video and, and and those would be super super funny but you know like i said i haven't gotten there yet uh so we're still in radio but we're working on doing some crossover work here soon yet is the key word to all of this yes uh, with your enthusiasm <laughs> your talent I believe one day you will get what you want. You'll get that Super Bowl advert. Coming back to voice acting, you have a wide range of experience doing TV commercials and radio spots. Plus, you have two radio shows. What are your radio shows about? Well, for the longest time, I had a radio show that was, it was funk. It was all about 70s funk uh, and old school, like disco. Uh, I'm a huge fan of disco and funk. Uh, and the other show I had was a morning show on a country station for a, a number of years. Uh, you know, and being, being the goofy kind of upbeat person I am, it usually works out well when I do a morning show. Uh, it's actually been, it's been a few months since I've been on the air. I've been focused uh, basically on, the, on the, the commercial side of things uh, right now. That's all right. You sound incredibly busy and like you're enjoying yourself. That's what matters. That's it. You know, if you can have more good days than bad days, then you're winning. That's Absolutely. It. Although maybe your listeners are missing you in the mornings. I don't know. Hey, that'd be nice to know. <laughs> <laughs> you do many different types of voice on air, including warm, fun, deep, goofy, as you say, and villainous, among others. I am curious, and I love villains in films and radio. What kind of villain are you when you put on your villainous voice? Maybe like an evil Dracula meets Jafar from Aladdin. Oh, oh. Remember Jafar? Oh yeah, he was so eloquent. But uh, but yeah, that's that's probably the villain that I would be. Uh, excellent work, Yago. On a scale of one to ten, you are an eleven. <laughs> what was your most challenging voice acting role, and why was it so difficult for you? There was actually there was actually two of them. Uh, one was uh, an MMA company out of New York. They wanted, uh, you know, one of these hardcore, which we call hard sell spots, where it's the big booming voice screaming. And, uh, you know, and so I sent one, one of those and he was like, oh, that's great, but I want you to scream even louder. Uh, and it basically killed me for about a day and a half. I couldn't voice anything. I mean, I was basically screaming at the top of my lungs and I hated doing every minute of it. I'm not going to lie. I hated every minute of it. Uh, and like I said, it took, me, it took me a day and a half to recover after that. The other one is uh, every, every couple of years, I host something called the Pirate Festival, the Pirates of the High Seas Fest in Panama City Beach, Florida. And so I dress like a pirate, and I'm the announcer for all the ceremonies for three days. And we're talking three nine-hour days. I talk like a pirate in front of 10,000 people. I have to hold, I have to keep character you know, the whole time. Uh, so that's, that's one of the toughest things I do, but it's also the funnest and one of the most rewarding. You know, I get to stand on stage, be a goofy pirate matey, you know, and it, it's just, it's exciting. And, it's, and, it, and it, it's, it takes the voiceover thing to another level. 
uh, you know, to where it's, it's more into acting. And, and, you know, like I said, it's one of those things that I would almost do it for free because it's just, it's so much fun. If you could go back in time and speak with your younger self, what advice would you give him about being a voice actor and a commercial producer? Start your website early. Start your website within the first year of doing this. That would be the key thing. That, that's one thing that I have not done yet. Uh, I, I stay so busy, like I was telling you, the amount of commercials I produce, I stay so busy that I don't have time. So I need to find someone to build my website. And, and, but that's one of the things that's probably held me back more than most things is people cannot find me yet. Uh, you know, SoundCloud, I have a couple of things on Facebook, you know, it's, it's uh, but, but people can't find me. You can hear me. And, you know, like the Old Navy, I'm, I'm the voice for Old Navy here on the East Coast. And it's like, 45 million people have heard that voice but they don't know who i am yet and so that's that's the step that i need to take need to tell my younger self and probably my older self now uh that it's something that needs to happen in your opinion what is the hardest part about voice acting and how does that differ from being a commercial producer the hardest part about voice acting is really inflection you have to you have to live the copy you can't just speak it uh, you know, when, I, when I'm voicing copy scripts, uh, my hands are moving, my voice is moving, I change my mic to where I don't have to be directly in front of it to voice something. Uh, so I can actually live and, and move and be free because the copy sounds better that way. Uh, even with a smile on your face. I mean, that's a huge thing. Uh, you know, and that's, to me, that's probably the hardest part about voiceover, proper inflection, knowing how to read the sentences and knowing how to make it sink in. When, when you're talking to people now, you know, the commercial production end of things, uh, there's, there's a lot of different levels. You've, you've got, you know, proper music choices, you know, you got to make sure you pick something that, that goes with the format of the station that it's playing on. Or, uh, you know, like I said, it's you know, when you're producing other people's voices, you have to know, you know, what compression settings to make them sound good, make their voice pop. Uh, you know, there's a lot of different levels in voice production. Uh, but, uh, but like I said, it's out of all the things I've ever done, it's, it's, it's probably quite possibly the most rewarding. It's just fun. And when you make somebody smile and somebody listens to something and they giggle or they smile, it's, uh, it's all worth it. I didn't know anything about that with voice acting. It sounds so much harder than I ever would have thought. There's so many levels to it. And I've only learned some of the most complicated stuff in the last five years. Uh, you know, I haven't had any vocal coaches, uh, you know, so I've just kind of learned myself and learned from listening. Uh, you know, there's a couple of big voices here in the States, uh, Dan Kelly, New York City. Uh, there's there's a couple, Jenna Birmingham in, uh, in Dallas. You know, there's a lot of great voices out there. And, uh, you know, those guys, they, they know all about the inflection. But uh, there's a lot of people doing voiceover work now. I mean, there's a lot, uh, you know, Fiverr, and you've got all these voice websites to pull people off of. But nine times out of 10, they don't understand inflection. You know, and that's, inflection is key. That was what I was always told. <laughs> When people listen to your voice acting and talk to you about your performances, how does it make you feel? Before I get a little shy, I would get a little shy, a little nervous, uh, you know, and, 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 and still to this day, I'm still critical of my own voice. Uh, I guess a lot of people are like that, you know, we're, we're critical of our own stuff, you know, but, uh, but yeah, I really think that, uh, you know, now I'm like, oh, I'm excited. It excites me. It makes me smile. Before, like I said, I was nervous. You know, are they going to like it? You know, and in and, and, and constructive criticism, you know, some people can't take constructive criticism. Uh, you know, so I've, I've had to grow a thick shell over the years because you never know how someone's going to react. You know, if, uh, you know, oh, they hate your voice. You know, that's, that's really not a way to talk to someone. You know, they'd like to choose another voice. <laughs> you know, th these are things that make it easy. But, uh, but like I said, that's that's basically it. Sounds like you've developed the thick skin required to do your job to the maximum. Oh, lots of revisions. That's, <laughs> everybody in this business has revisions. I don't care how good you are. <laughs> good. It's a good mindset to have. It's why you're succeeding. It sounds like you can take the criticism now, probably always as well. Maybe you're being too hard on yourself. Maybe. Sometimes. Probably so. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good at doing that. <laughs> this is one of my favorite questions to ask voice actors. Say you have a cold or the flu one day, yet you have recording to do. 
What do you do so as to make your voice sound well and engaging rather than ill? Shout out Jack Daniels. No, uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, uh, there's, there's some teas out there, some warm teas. Uh, one of them, I'm trying to remember the name of it. It's like a throat coat tea. Uh, that helps you, uh, you know, humidifiers. Uh, also help you because if you're dried out, you know, and, and in the middle of the sickness, you really sound cruddy. You know, when I was young, they used to say, oh, you sound better when you're sick. It's like a compressor, you know, Ed. <laughs> no, you sound horrible when you're sick uh, <laughs> and you get really nasally and it sounds horrible. Uh, so, yeah, you can't do that, you know, but uh, but like I said, the throat coat tea, uh, you know, warm, warm stuff. I don't I don't drink Cokes uh, or stuff like that. I drink flavored water. A lot of the time, you know, try to save my voice. It makes me money, so I got to take care of it. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, the throat coat tea really helps. Uh, but you know, some days when you're when you're so sick, you just can't do it. You can't do it. You don't want to put your voice out there on something you know it's going to be substandard. You know. Outside of voice acting, what do you like to do in your spare time? Well, I've, I'm a pretty active guy. I like uh, I like the outdoors, hiking. Uh, you know, hiking uh, cars as well. I have a car that a special car that I usually keep in the garage that I only drive on the weekends. It's uh, right now it's a it's a, a 2006 uh, Mercedes CLK 55 AMG. It's uh, it's really too fast for me to be driving, but uh, but that's my little weekend project. So you know, because like you said, you know, you sit we sit in front of a computer for 40, 50, 60 hours a week. Uh, so on the weekends, I gotta get away from the studio. So uh, that's one of the things that helps me is working on the car, going out. Uh, now I got a virtual reality headset, so that stuff's crazy. That's something else to do. Uh, I haven't put my hand through a wall yet or anything or fell over <laughs> anything. So uh, we're doing all right there. <laughs> Sounds like you've got a good life. You know what? I'm happy. I'm happy. We have an adopted daughter. I have a partner of 22 years. Uh, I'm happy. I am. And, I, and I've got a great job. I work for a great company, uh, Intercom. Uh, you know, they, I've been with them for three years and they take great care of me. Sounds perfect. Sounds like you've got your life in the, going in the right direction. Keep it going, man. I want to do my best. I've got uh, something else coming out later this year. Uh, you know, with all the voices I do, I don't get to utilize them as much uh, in commercial radio, uh, you know, because not every spot can be funny. Not, you know, so, so I've actually picked up an animation program and I'm starting a cartoon series this year. That's going to help me utilize my voices. And uh, I do a little bit of artwork as well. Uh, but that's, that's the next step is, is broadening my horizons with some cartoons. Uh, so that's coming here this year. I wish you the best of luck. Absolute success. Nothing. Hey, Seth, uh, Seth McFarland did it, right? That's right. <laughs> so we'll give it a shot. Please, God, you'll be as successful as Seth MacFarlane. Hey, thank you for that. <laughs> hey, that works out. I might give you a piece. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'll hold you to it. <laughs> um, lastly, and I cannot believe we're on the last question already. Is there anything else you'd like to say that you haven't already in this interview? I just, I'd like to thank you. You know, uh, I haven't had an opportunity to do this. Uh, you know, and I appreciate you uh, asking me questions. You know, we don't we don't get a lot of this uh, in the voiceover world. You know, you know, if you're an actor and you're on TV all the time, then, yeah, you, you get a lot of you get a lot of this. But, you know, when people just hear you and don't see you, uh, you know, you don't get a chance to do much of this. So this was really enjoyable for me to do. And I appreciate your time today. Well, thank you very much. Uh, it works both ways. And I've thoroughly enjoyed interviewing you. Thank you for saying yes. Oh yeah. Oh, and, and last, I want to show you, show you one thing. I was telling you about the Radio Mercury Award. So it's actually made out of a radio tube. That's so cool. And uh, and getting it through the airport when I won it, getting back home was a nightmare. It almost didn't make it through the airport. They thought it was something else. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, this is this is the pride and joy, man. This is uh, years of me finally saying that I, I actually picked the right career. Uh, you know, and uh, last year I was a finalist as well and the year before, but uh, maybe next year, maybe next year we'll win another one of those. And that's all I have for you today, guys. Thank you for watching. And I really hope you have enjoyed this interview with the voice actor and award-winning commercial producer, John Wallace.
like, comment and hit that subscribe button and tell me, what did you think of the interview? Do you agree that John is infectiously enthusiastic and extremely talented? In the description below, I have left links to John's email address and to his SoundCloud account. Filmmakers, take note. If you are looking for an excellent and experienced voice actor to do some narration work for your commercials and or character voiceover work for your animation, then John is your man. Check out his materials and get in touch with him now. Moreover, my debut fantasy novella, The Sultan's Daughter, is out. If you are looking for a book that is short, fast-paced and full of suspense, then check it out. I have left the link for the book in the description below as well. Otherwise, until next time, keep well. Once again, guys, I just wanted to say thank you so much for watching my video. I really appreciate it and I hope you've enjoyed it. Hit that subscribe button and then you will be the first to receive more awesome content from my channel. And I hope to see you again soon.